the system of equations. We must deal with them all at once. Always looking for solutions. Positive outlook overcome. Hello, my name is Roy Simpson, professor of mathematics at Cosumnes River College in Sacramento, California. This video is for linear algebra students who have just started into linear algebra and have just reviewed solving linear systems and have had an introduction to augmented matrices of linear systems. Also, you definitely should have been introduced to row operations at this point because we're gonna be talking about them right now. The point of this video is to talk about row equivalent matrices and the ramifications of having two matrices that are row equivalent to each other. It's a pretty simple definition. The definition goes like this. Two matrices are row equivalent if a sequence of elementary row operations transforms one matrix into the other. And as a heads up, if I start with a matrix A and I perform a single elementary row operation, maybe a row scaling operation or something like that, and we get to a new matrix, we'll call it A sub one, and then you perform yet another row operation, let's pretend it's a row replacement, to create a sub two and so on and so forth down the line. Since we have taken A and done a ton of elementary row operations to arrive at A sub P, turns out A and A sub P are considered to be row equivalent matrices. Another thing I should point out, and we're about to prove it in a moment, but elementary row operations are invertible. They can be undone. In other words, you can go in reverse. Well, if you can go in reverse, that means that A sub P is row equivalent to A because you can drive from A to A sub P using elementary row operations and you can drive in reverse from A sub P to A doing the reverse elementary row operations. And this is just a lengthy way of saying that if A is row equivalent to B, then B has to be row equivalent to A. And here's the theorem I just alluded to saying that row operations are invertible. Now, we are going to outline a proof. It's actually not as rigorous as a standard proof should be. However, I just wanna outline the proof of this theorem. Now we know we have three elementary row operations, so let's write those elementary row operations down. And I wrote them down in an order that I prefer, row scaling, row interchanging, and row replacement or row replacing. One of these has a very, very important caveat, and that's the very first row operation. Row scaling means that you're taking a non-zero scalar and multiplying it by a row of your matrix to create a new row of your matrix. So when we say something like, oh, take a non-zero scalar C multiplied by row I to become the new row I for some matrix A, well, that takes the matrix A and creates a row equivalent matrix we'll call A sub one. What if we wanted to go backwards and take A sub one and arrive back at A? Well, we have to undo the multiplication of row I by the scalar C. Well, luckily C is non-zero. So undoing a multiplication by C is the same thing as dividing by C. So to undo that row scaling, we will take one over C times row I and create the new row I, which actually will be the good old same row I from the original matrix A. So this will take our A sub one and transform it back into the original matrix A. By the way, I said a word there that's very important in this course, it's called a transform or a transformation, and that is going to be critical as we move forward. So just be aware, I'm using specific words that occur throughout this course, and it's just good to hear them at the beginning so that you know that they're coming up as big topics later on. So we've shown that scaling can be invertible as long as the scale is non-zero. Let's talk about row interchanging. We're gonna take row I and swap it with row J, thereby taking A and transforming it into a new matrix A sub one via the elementary row operation of row interchanging. Now remember, A and A sub one are considered to be row equivalent by definition. Now, how do you undo row interchanging? If we swapped rows one and five, how would you undo that? Well, you would swap rows one and five again. That would undo 
all of that row interchange, thereby transforming A sub 1 right back into the original matrix A. Now the fun one here is row replacement. That's when you take a multiple of some row, add it to another row to become that other row. That is, we take a constant times row i, add it to row j, that will create the new row j. And again, it's row replacement or an elementary row operation, so it transforms the matrix A into a new matrix, we'll call it A sub 1. Those two matrices are row equivalent because it was just a simple elementary row operation. Well, how do you undo that? That's a little trickier to know without seeing an example. So let's just showcase an example off to the side here. So I'll use um, green ink just to showcase that this is something that would never be in my proof, but I'd like to see what we're doing. Let's pretend that's the matrix A, and I just want to use row replacement to kill off this two right there. Well, how would you do it? Well, you would take negative two times row one, and you'd add it to row two to become the new row two. Well, let's just see what our A sub one, our row equivalent matrix is after that elementary row operation. All right, we get down to there. Now here's the deal. I want to get from this matrix, which I'll call A sub one, just to align with everything we're doing. I want to get from that matrix back to the original matrix. How am I going to do that? Well, I would love for this entry here to become a positive two. One way to force it to become a positive two is to multiply row one by two, add it to row two to become the new row two. Well, let's see what happens when we do that. And lo and behold, we're back to the original matrix. While this is not a proof that this is always going to undo the row replacement operation, it is true that if you take C times row I and add it to row J to become the new row J, the inverse of that operation is negative C times row I adding it to row J will become the new row J. I'm just gonna write that down. And of course that takes our new matrix A sub one and transforms it back into the old matrix A. Now you may say, well, you didn't really prove that that gets to the original row J. Eh, you kind of did actually. We had a row J originally, and then we applied an elementary row operation to make it become C row I plus row J. This was from A sub one, and this was from the matrix A. We started with a matrix A where row J is just row J, and then A sub one, our row J is C row I plus row J. Well, now imagine that we do yet another transformation here, and this transformation will take negative C times row I plus what row J is now, which is this right here, and we, find out that that row ends up simplifying down to the original row J. Therefore, that is actually a good proof that replacing is invertible. Row replacement is an invertible row operation. And therefore, we have sort of proven that row operations are invertible. And we're gonna finish out this video with this single little theorem here. If the augmented matrices of two linear systems are row equivalent, then the original two linear systems must be equivalent. There's a little bit to dice apart here. So let's, let's actually talk about it. So I have two augmented matrices. Let's call these augmented matrices A and B. Those are our two augmented matrices. They stand for the coefficients of some linear systems in the background. So A is representing some maybe three by three linear system, three equations with three unknowns. And B is also representing a three by three linear system, three equations and three unknowns. And by the way, I'm saying they're the same size because we're supposing that the augmented matrices A and B are row equivalent. That is, they differ from each other, or maybe I should say one begets the other via simple elementary row operations. When you perform elementary row operations, the size of your matrix does not change. Well, something to remember is when you perform elementary row operations, well, guess what? Solutions do not change to your underlying linear system. 
And that was a theorem we introduced a while ago, that solutions are invariant under row operations. That is, I start with the matrix A, I perform a few row operations, or A row operation, I get to A sub 1, I perform another one, I get to A sub 2, and so on and so forth down the line. Eventually, I will arrive at, through a bunch of row operations, the matrix B. And through that process, the solution to the underlying linear system should never change, because again, elementary row operations never change solutions. Thus, the solutions to the linear system that B represents match the solutions to the linear system that A represents. That is, A and B represent linear systems having a shared solution set. That is, if those augmented matrices of two linear systems are row equivalent, then the two linear systems have the same solution. That is, they are equivalent. That's gonna be very powerful as we move forward because you're gonna be handed systems and matrices all the time. And sometimes somebody will just say, here's a matrix A and here's a matrix B. They don't look like each other except for size, but guess what? They are row equivalent. Well, then you immediately know the linear systems that each of those represent have the same solution set. So if you know the solution set to B, or at least to the linear system that B represents is empty, just visually you can see that immediately, then you immediately know no matter how complicated A looks, that the solution set for its related linear system is also empty. All right, that pretty much does it for this video. And I think I have one more video to go. I actually am doing these about six months after I recorded all my video series. I just found out today I forgot to record this one and the next one. So here I am. I hope to see you in the next video. It's the system of equations. We must deal with them all at once. Always looking for solutions. Positive outlook overcomes. Obstacles getting in our way comes. Effects more than we can sometimes see. Things for what they are and work together until you feel at peace. Listen close. Don't talk too much. That isn't kosher. You may really hurt inside. It doesn't justify you to speak too loud and cry.